I'm going to discuss about the lengthy classification in a brief nutshell. Previously, we had a King's classification, which was based mainly upon the thermal plane corrections. Now we know there's a sagittal component to deformity as well. And this King classification was mainly based upon the posterior based construct, which is to impart a significantly less corrective force as compared to modern day segmental instrumentation. So there was a need to uh, define the curve in a both coronal and sagittal plane. And that's when the Lawrence Lenke and Harm study group came out with a new classical system, which was comprehensive because it included almost 42 types of curve types. It was two dimensional. So now they used to define the triple measure, thoracal lumbar, lumbar curve, which were not defined separately in a King's classification. It was treatment based because they came out with the algorithm which recommended treatment based upon the nature of the curves. It was reliable because there was a good inter and intra observer reproducibility. And it was set upon the specific arbitrary criteria so there could be a, a uniform guidelines in managing these curves. These curves. I think the Tushar got disconnected. Uh, it, we have a video with us. Uh, there is a problem from our side, I yeah, problem is from our side. Yeah. is already on. I can see him. Yeah, but he is not presenting online. He is. Uh, we have a recorded video. Tech team. Do we have a backup? Tushar can share his screen and play his own video. Uh, uh, I can try from myself. So I'm just allowed to share. Okay, let me see. I'm going to discuss about the lengthy classification in a brief nutshell. Previously, we had a King's classification, which was based mainly upon the thermal plane corrections. Now we know there's a sagittal component. Start from when we had ended as well, and this King's classification was mainly based upon the posterior based construct which is to impart a significantly less corrective force as compared to modern day segmental instrumentation. So there was a need to uh, define the curve in a both coronal and sagittal plane. And that's when the Lawrence Lenke and Harm study group came out with a new classical system, which was comprehensive because it included almost 42 types of curve types. It was two dimensional. So now they used to define the triple measure, thoracal lumbar, lumbar curve, which were not defined separately in a King's classification. It was treatment based because they came out with the algorithm which recommended treatment based upon the nature of the cause. It was reliable because there was a good inter and intra observer reproducibility. And it was set upon the specific arbitrary criteria so there could be a, a uniform guidelines in managing these curves. So there are a, a specific terminology that one has to understand before embarking on this classification. So a classification in a linky uh, has a three component. First component is identifying the curve type. Second component is identifying the lumbar modifier. And third type is identifying the sagittal modifier. And what are these factors we will learn in a subsequent slide. So if this kind of x-ray is given, there are two curves. That is a major curve and a minor curve. So when you see this x-ray, a, a curve which is of a larger magnitude is considered as a major curve. And by default, major curve is considered to be a structural. Now, in this case, a thoracic curve is a larger magnitude, you can see 60 degrees, so it's a major curve. And there are adjacent curves which may exist. For example, here there are two curves, proximal thoracic, that is 24 degree, and lumbar curve, which is 32 degree. So these will be treated as a minor curve. Now, the second step is to understand whether these minor curves, what is the flexibility? Are they structural or not? And how do we see a particular curve as a structural or not? is depending on their flexibility on a side bending radiogram. So what we do is essentially do a bending and see the magnet of this curve on a side bending. If the magnet of this curve on a side bending still shows a residual curve angle of more than 25 degree, then it is considered as a structural curve. That is on a coronal plane. What about the sagittal plane? So for example, for a proximal thoracic curve, to know whether it is structural or not, we do a kyphosis angle, we calculate a COPS angle between the T2 and T5 vertebra and if it is more than 20 degree, it is considered as a structural. For a main thoracic or thoracolumbar lumbar curve, we calculate the kyphosis angle on a sagittal profile that is COPS angle between the T10 to L2 vertebra and if it's more than 20 degree, it is considered as a structural. So we understood what is major curve, 
what are the minor curve and how do we understand whether the minor curve is structured or not depending on the side bending radiograph and a surgical profile so we need a four radiograph to determine this as we understood we need a standing kernel profile standing sagittal profile and a supine bending curves if there is a pelvic obliquity on an x-ray of less than 2 cm it can be neglected but if it's more than 2 cm one has to give a block to correct the pelvis to determine the curve type so first step is to identify this curve and measure this curve magnitude as we discussed the proximal thoracic curve will have a apex between the t3 t4 t5 vertebra the main thoracic curve will have a apex between t6 to t11 t3 t12 interspace displace the thoracic lumbar curve will have a apex between the t12 superior inflate to a l1 inferior inflate vertebra and a lumbar curve will have a apex anywhere between the l1 l2 disc to the inferior inflate of l4 vertebra so these are the uh, apex are depending on the curve region once we do that we measure the same curves on a bending uh, profile so we will measure the what is the bend angle after bending what is the proximal thoracic thoracic lumbar and main thoracic curve third step is to know what is a uh, uh, sagittal profile uh, a radiograph shows this particular curve on a sagittal profile so as we discussed proximal thoracic will measure the t2 to t5 cops angle if it's more than 20 degree it's structural and for other curve we'll measure t10 to l2 cops angle and if it's more than 20 degree it will be structural the other thing that we need to measure is to understand what is a sagittal modifier because that is a one of the component of a classification and how do we know sagittal modifier we measure our cops angle between the t5 superior inflate and t12 inferior inflate and if this cops angle is less than 10 degree it is considered as a hypokyphosis and it will be denoted by minus sign if this angle between the t5 to t12 is 10 to 40 degree it is a normal kyphosis and it will be labeled as n and if it is more than 40 it is called as a hyperkyphosis and it will be labeled as a plus sign and the third component is a lumbar modifier so what is a lumbar modifier we all know central sacro vertical line which is a perpendicular passing through the midpoint of s1 at its perpendicular horizontal which is traversing the superior inflate so we need to determine the relation of csvl with the lumbar apical vertebra so if the csvl is passing through the two pedicles of lumbar apical vertebra it's called as a a modifier if CSVL it's passing between the medial wall of the lum uh, lumbar apical vertebra and the lateral wall of the lumbar apical vertebral body, it is called as a B. And if CSVL is not touching the lumbar apical vertebra, it is called as a C. So this has an implication on the flexibility of the lumbar curve, and this will also have an implication on the management because type C are notorious curve and they may sometimes, in spite of being non-structural, may need to be incorporated in the fusion mass. There are six curve type that Linky described. So what is type one curve? That is a main thoracic curve. Here only the main thoracic curve is structural and adjacent proximal thoracic or thoracic lumbar and lumbar curve are non-structural. What is double thoracic curve? Here both proximal thoracic and main thoracic both are structural whereas thoracic lumbar and lumbar is non-structural. What is double major? Here proximal thoracic is non-structural but main thoracic and thoracic lumbar curve are uh, or lumbar curve are structural what is triple major where both proximal thoracic main thoracic or thoracic lumbar lumbar curve are structural and all these four curve can be subclassified into a b and c depending on the csvl and its relation with the apical vertebra and each pattern then again resubclassified into a normal minus or plus depending on the kyphosis between the t5 to t12 vertebra and what is the type 5 and type 6? So type 5 and type 6 are the only curve where the thoraco lumbar or lumbar curve will be major curve. And in type 5, only thoraco lumbar and lumbar curve is structural. The adjacent minor curve that is proximal thoracic and main thoracic are non-structural. Whereas in type 6, main thoracic and thoraco lumbar lumbar is structural but proximal thoracic is non-structural. These two curve patterns will not have A and B because of obvious curve nature and they have to have a C classification. And that's why we have only 42 classification and not a 54 classification groups. Again, the slide is not moving.
so basically this is a, a slide which is talking about the drawbacks of the classification uh, as it has a 42 cow types it increases the complexity and there are certain rule breakers in this classification uh, like type 1c where we go on choosing even non structural cow and the linky classification does not give us exactly where to stop and where to start that's a drawback so that is what the last side mentions uh, i apologize for the technical delay but that, that's all nutshell about the linky classification uh, thank you very much tushar that was very informative you have really made it uh, simple for us uh, to understand this classification uh, uh, by the time we move on to our next talk by uh, our prediction of scoliosis and we can take some questions uh, from the faculties and delegates okay if there are uh, tushar there are some confusions uh, can we pause the video for a while tushar there are some confusions uh, in linke classifications especially for the beginners uh, that means uh, that usually is type 1 curve is bends less than uh, 25 degree okay that is one uh, confusion so what what would we consider second thing if there is a proximal curve which is not in coronal plane and only in sagittal uh, plane there is a, a deformity so how to how link has include that yeah i think that's a very important question so this is the only classification uh, uh, the advantage over the kings was it also specifically talked about the sagittal classification of type confusion when hyperkyphosis or hypo ai is usually with hypokyphosis most of the time but if there is a significant kyphosis of more than 20 degree then uh, one has to be cautious and should incorporate that particular curve in a fusion and that's what linky talked about regarding the sagittal plane correction and the second thing which you talked about the 25 degree thing so i i think specifically is that about the 25 degree it's a arbitrary curve, uh, uh, amount that even linky admitted but i think that Uh, works in most of the curve but having said that the clinical classification and uh, also clinical examination and there are certain sets of rule breaker uh, like linky 1 ar 1 al which will not be a scope in a 5 minutes uh, uh, talk that uh, one has to be careful when you are doing the instrument uh, thank you very much tushar tech team please uh, play on the next talk by dr hitesh we can't hear the wall sound we can't hear the sound factors and those factors that affect the curve progression as can, can we restart the slide let us discuss one by one as we know that scoliosis is a three dimensional deformity with cob angle more than 10 degree if curve is mild it seems okay if curve is severe then there are lot of other factors and those factors that affect the curve progression as and are enlisted here let us discuss one by one the first is sex or gender and as we commonly know that girls are much more likely to have scoliosis curves that progresses to the point that the treatment required and literature also said that if the curve is 30 degree or more girls have 10 is to 1 ratio for the progression over the boys suggested in this article the second factor is age at the time of diagnosis and again literature also confirms that the diagnosis of a scoliosis at a younger age means there is higher chances of curve progression this article by lonstein and carlson says that children 10 years or younger age group with the medium curve means 20 to 29 degrees has nearly 100% chances of progression of the scoliosis curve the skeletal maturity is a third factor and it basically suggest that how much growth a child has remaining and that is decided by certain growth plates rapid increase in spinal height at the time of pubertal growth spurt causes an increase in spinal curvature and therefore 
we can say that progression of AIS is closely related to the rapid growth. The maturity is often multidimensional and has various components such as chronological age, skeletal age, research sign, status of triradiate cartilage, tenor stage, etc. The most important of them is research sign as we know and it is basically a calcification of iliac wing apophysis to the iliac wing and it has been graded from grade 1 to grade 5. The famous article in 1984 suggested that research sign 0 or 1 showed 68% of the chances of progression in scoliosis patient and if research stage grows more like 2, 3 or 4 then these chances of progression gradually goes down. Demiglio also confirmed this report similarly that if the patient is having research stage 1 with 30 degree of curve there is 60% of the risk of progression. If the same patient is in research stage 2 then the chances of progression becomes 30% and similarly as research stage increases the chances of progression will go down. The hand x-rays as well as x-rays of olecranon those are again measurement of the skeletal age and skeletal maturity and it is also having a similar prognostic factors about the scoliosis curve progression. The rib vertebral angle or Mehta's angle given in 1972 by Dr. Mehta, it is basically a difference uh, between concave and convex side of rib vertebral angle to differentiate resolving versus progressive curve. And as we can see in this picture, that the measurement of rib vertebral angle difference if it is less than 20 degree then 83% of the curve will resolve and if it is more than 20 degree then 84% of the curve will progress. The initial cob angle is an important factor and literature uh, suggested that the main thoracic scoliotic curve exceeding 30 degree at the beginning of puberty will have 100% chances of progression. And however, Weinstein et al. has contradicted this curve and they have suggested that the progressive curve cannot be predicted whether it will progress to 30 degree or 78 degree. We have also developed one uh, paper about the drooping of the apical, apical convex rib and we suggested that if uh, the rib vertebral angle started drooping after given the bracing treatment that means the perpendicular corrective forces uh, applicable to the vertebra will not be effective because of the root droop, rib drooping and therefore the curve will progress. The last factor is a serum test. Uh, in certain uh, patients if high ghrelin level is there it can predict the curve progression over a period of time. So these are commonly seen the factors that affect the curve progression in a patient of adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. Thank you very much for kind hearing.